York to the West Coast. Go to San Francisco with your family and your golf ball. Place your golf ball at the beginning of the Golden Gate Bridge. Go across the bay into Oakland to a high place where you can see the entire Golden Gate Bridge. Another second Golden Golden Gate Bridge will be in your imagination. Span all the way back the two Golden Gate Bridges to the very beginning and find your golf ball over there. That's the earth and somewhere you're on it. One of the stars in the Milky Way galaxy. It's so big you could fit 2.7 quadrillion earths inside this one star. Thank you so much. Where have you been all night? Now, quadrillion we have not talked about, and I need to explain this just briefly because I don't know about you, but I do not understand the national debt or any numbers bigger than about $875.28. I get that number. Go bigger than that, I don't know. But you need to understand a quadrillion, okay, because this star is crazy big. A quadrillion, uh, let's do it this way. Everybody knows a million, right? How many of you know what a million is? You can kind of get your head around a million. Everybody? All right. You know that a billion is a thousand million and a trillion is a thousand billion and a quadrillion is a thousand trillion, right? Everybody knew that? Here's the perspective. This changed my life, right? A million seconds ago, 12 days ago. Isn't that cool? See, that saves you doing that on your little calculator at home, which I dare you to try to do when you get home tonight. But a billion seconds ago? You're thinking, oh my goodness, if it's 12 days ago, I'm going all the way back to like September with you, Louie. This must be crazy, right? How about May 1975 is a billion seconds ago. You're like, whoa, that's a little bit bigger than a million. Oh yeah. A trillion seconds ago, you're like, "Uh uh-huh, I'm on the 1800s. No. Christopher Columbus? No. 29,700 BC is a trillion seconds ago. A quadrillion seconds ago, 30 million 800,000 years ago is a quadrillion seconds ago. We're talking about a really large number, and Musifi is so big, you could put 2.7 quadrillion Earths inside this one star. But it is not even the biggest star we have found. I love science. And science has just brought us the largest star they found. It's called, are you ready for this? Canis Majoris. Now, I'm no linguist, but that's a cool name for the biggest star we've found so far. I think that means the big dog star, and that's exactly what it is. I bring it to you as a little bitty purple, you know, glow just to the right of center there. But Canis Majoris, oh, wow. If the earth were a golf ball, (laughs) Canis Majoris would be the height of Mount Everest. Thank you. You just saved your family plane fare from California to Kathmandu, Nepal. Almost six miles above sea level, the highest point on the planet, and I just dare you to get up there and unzip the parka and pull out your golf ball. You could fit seven quadrillion earths inside Canis Majoris. That's enough earths if the earth were a golf ball to cover the entire state of Texas in golf balls 22 inches deep. You see the one you're on? Maybe this will help a little bit more. This absolutely blew my mind. Just a little journey through our solar system. Everyone knows our planets and sort of how we fit in to the story here. You see really quickly that we're not even the biggest deal in our own solar system, but as Earth comes by, you have to know tonight that we are living on a privileged planet. Anyone would tell you we're living at one of the most special places, if not the most special place in all of creation. But Neptune comes by and Saturn and then Jupiter and you're like, okay, we're not all that big, even in our own little cul-de-sac. (laughs) 
Now just notice the blue dot fading away is not the earth. That's Neptune. The earth has gotten too small to see anymore. Sirius comes by. A little plug for satellite radio. <laughs> not the biggest star, but the brightest star that we have found so far. Pollux, which we didn't mention. Arcturus. Such a beautifully named one, Regal. But then the one that messed me up. Our third star, Musifi. Musifi's cousin, W. Sifi. Canis Majoris. And do you know that you couldn't come up here right now with a Sharpie and make a mark on the screen that would approximate the size of our sun? You couldn't even do it. I mean, when you look at these and their relative size, we just have to put a little arrow over there that says, if you could put the sun on here, which you can't, it would go somewhere about here. And um, can you hang on that for me? And when you see this, I don't know what happens to you, but I'll tell you what happens to me. A shrinking feeling comes over me, and it's not a bad shrinking feeling. It's a good shrinking feeling. Because sin, it has a, a way of shrinking God down in our minds and puffing us up in our own estimation. But just a glance into the universe that God has made resizes everything in a heartbeat. And you realize tonight, we are worshiping an unrivaled, uncontested God of all kind of might and power and glory and awe who is, there's none like him anywhere in all of creation tonight. We are not here worshiping some little teeny tiny God. We are the teeny tiny ones, you and me. We are small and weak and fragile and frail. We are, you and me tonight, one of six and a half billion people on this little golf ball sized planet in this massive universe that God has made. But I'll tell you the miracle of tonight is, is crazy and crazier to me than the size of any star is that though we are but a vapor, you and me, and tiny and frail, we are marked by majesty. And we have been created in the very image of the God who breathes out the stars and put the universe into place. You and I are fashioned and formed and ordained by the God of all creation. We are fearfully and wonderfully made, you and I. We are a miracle. You're a miracle sitting in the building tonight. If I could just remind you just for a moment, you are somebody incredibly special. Let me just dial back to the beginning, and I, I know you know this already, but in the very, very beginning, here's how you happened, okay? One cell from your mom found one cell from your dad. Now, there's more involved in that than that, but that's enough for us right now. And by the way, we should applaud the one cell from your dad because that one cell did a pretty heroic thing to be the one cell in the story that we're talking about tonight. One cell from your mom met up with one cell from your dad, each one carrying 23 chromosomes. The one from your mom was carrying half of her DNA. The one from your dad was carrying half of his DNA. And those two cells met and merged into one single cell. And when they did, those chromosomes matched and they began to form together a brand new DNA code using four characters, four nucleotides, they begin to write out what we have now discovered is the three billion character description of who you are written in the language of God. They wrote out your DNA, your human genome of three billion characters made up of those four simple nucleotides. And when they did, they described who God had ordained you to be.